This is the Springfield St. Victor Chambered in 308. It comes with BCM furniture, has a beautiful flat face trigger, also has a 16 inch barrel with a beautiful rail that sadly doesn't have anything on the top, but aesthetically works for me. And then you have the foldable iron sights along with this big old brake at the front to annoy everybody on the side of you. But most importantly, look at this beautiful two to 10 Leupold optic with the Delta Point Pro. Isn't she pretty? This is probably the third AR-10 pattern rifle that I've reviewed on the channel as of recent. Apparently making 308 rifles with 16 inch barrels is all the rage right now. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm not mad at it because I'm one of those people that I just like to chunk big bullets sometimes. And this chunks big bullets and it does it looking really, really, really nice. One of the things that stand out to me the most on this rifle is the finish. I'm one of those people, you know, I'm really big on aesthetics. And the finish on the St. Victor 308 is just this beautiful midway sheeny kind of black that just looks honestly like it's wrapped. You know, like those, those satin wraps that you put on vehicles or like I have on my truck right now. That's what it looks like. And it's all uniform. It doesn't look ashy. It just looks slick. Before you finish watching this video, a word from our sponsor. Have you ever thought about making a living in the firearms industry? If you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute's online courses might just be a good fit for you. To find out more, visit sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767 today. All the ammo used in this video is brought to you by Nosler. Speaking of slick, you got this thing that a lot of companies are starting to do now, this flat top. Um, I'm assuming it has to do with reducing the weight, um, and I'm assuming it has a lot to do with people complaining about the fact that they don't like feeling the Picatinny rail system up top here. I think those people are a bunch of babies. I personally don't, does, I actually like it because it allows me to get a better grip on the gun. However, visually, it does look slick. I won't lie. I want to lie and say it doesn't, but it, it does. It does look slick. But it also sucks too because I don't get to have the full accessibility of my top rail. So if I were to want to switch his pads and things like that, I have to run them on this kind of 45 degree angle side, which I'll live, but you yeah, know. So I know some of you are wondering about this optical setup that I have going on right here. It's a little pole two to five, sorry. It's a little pole two to 10. It's their Mark V HD line, two to 10 with a Delta Point Pro on top of it for your kind of close quarter combat stuff which I think fits this rifle exquisitely. And the reason why I say that is because you got a platform that is capable of shooting out to extended distances and delivering a lot of thump and power behind that round, while at the same time being short enough and being light enough to work close quarter stuff if you had to do it. So I'll just show it here to you now. If I want to do some close quarter stuff with this, you just sit in here, boom, 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 right? And then there's nothing for me if I need to go out to an extended distance, get on the gun, boom, boom. Boom. Or if I wanted to, I could put a bipod on here and get down, ratchet this thing up to 10 and be good to go. I had bipods on it, I took it off. Um, I got introduced to this setup by, more or less by my friend Buck Doyle. And I'm gonna be taking a course actually with him in the near future where we're gonna be running this type of setup exclusively. Uh, so look forward to that. You know, I can't stop looking at it for some reason. And I think it's because of my obsession with deep blacks. Like it just, it's such a good looking clean rifle. Um, some rifles look cool, some rifles look crazy, some rifles look kind of regular, and then they're just those rifles that just have a very clean aesthetic to them. And this rifle has that type of aesthetic. You know, even though I don't have my top rail where I wanna put a bunch of light switches and stuff, typically is what I like to do, um, I almost don't wanna hinder the lines of the gun by doing that. Um, because largely, I like it. It's such a clean looking gun. I just wanna keep it simple. One thing I will say that kind of annoys me is this front iron sight which is technically plastic. But the reason I don't care for this thing too much, the actual sight in and of itself is good. Pop it up, you're good to go. It actually works, does everything it's supposed to do. This just annoys me. Considering how clean this rifle looks, with the clean lines, I just want it to stay flat. Stay flat and it annoys me. Just stop it, stay, stay, stay. It doesn't do that. But that's neither here nor there. Now let's talk about this trigger. Instantly, the most notable aspect of this gun when you first see it, and I think Springfield did a good job with this from a marketing standpoint. You make this beautiful, sleek, rich black looking rifle, and then you put this gray flat face trigger in there. So this trigger could be 
absolute dog crap. And your mind won't even let you go there because it looks so different. This looks like a high-end $200 trigger. Now, the question remains, is it? Well, let's find out. So, it is a single-stage trigger. Here, I'll just go here. Single-stage trigger, so you have a very definitive and strong wall, and you basically pull, and it breaks. Like, it's very clean, very crisp. There's, no, there's nothing. There's literally no take-up. Boom. Feels about, i say 3.5 to 4 pounds, maybe a little bit heavier. Um, but now, let's look at the reset. Reset. Okay. Trigger reset isn't life changing. It's your standard good reset on a trigger. So with this trigger, there's a bit of a visual placebo effect going on where regardless of what this trigger is, right? And I think the trigger is good. I'm not really keen on single stage triggers but for a single stage trigger, this one feels really good. It's not super high speed, low drag, but it is a good single stage trigger that comes in a stock rifle that is relatively affordable. That said, because of the way the trigger looks and the contrast of the color and the shape, it makes it look like a $200 trigger. So you're gonna immediately give it two points above what it actually is if you were to actually shoot this trigger. So if it was a five, it's gonna, in your mind, be perceived as a seven, which I ain't mad at. Dress it up and make it real for me. But at the end of the day, I do think this trigger is good. It is a good single stage trigger, um, especially because it allows me to do things like this. Like I can run the gun the way I need to. I can run it like a standard AR-15 chamber in 556223. Or if you just wanna go really precise and do something more precision-like, it still allows you to do that because it gives you that level of tactility where you can precisely break that trigger the way you need to. So like if I wanted to stand here and shoot at the very top of the head of that target down there, freehand, I can do that. No problem. So that's why I think this is a really good trigger. It gets out of your way while also looking really sexy. This rifle is inherently light on paper, 7.8 pounds. That's light for a 308 rifle of this nature. However, because I like throwing heavy stuff on my guns, like this setup here, um, it adds a lot more weight to the gun that you otherwise wouldn't have. But that still doesn't take the gun away from my ability to do this. Like I can still run the gun from a changing position standpoint. Hold on, I got my magnification too damn high. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. Like, you can run the gun. You can run the gun. It's balanced. It's not too front heavy. So for me, okay, I know I complained about this flat top rail system here. Um, this feels really good, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like there's something about it feels good. I still prefer the grippiness of having a uh, Picatinny rail system on here, but it, do, it does feel good in hand. I give them that. I'll give them that. I'll, I'll concede. Still though. I think I still... <laughs> this, this, yeah, look at that. Just so clean and sexy. So clean. Just look the way the light just gleams off of it. Makes you want to eat off of it. Mmm, mmm. So, yeah, Springfield St. Victor 308. Talk about a hell of a name. Sheesh. Right now, there's a culture war against the Second Amendment, which is why I need your help spreading our message to counter their message. You can help do this by leaving a comment, sharing this video, and click the bell and subscribe button. Let my voice be your voice and let them know you want to keep America tactical because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion, it was a directive. Also, if you're wondering where to purchase your AR-15s are essential, I will not comply. I am the militia, the new Draco design, and your state-specific Keep America Tactical shirt Click the link under the Keep America Tactical in the description section of this video.